So now let's move into the omics revolution. And this is truly where we're getting a heck of a lot of data. So from the bugs perspective, we obviously have genes, which leads to the genome and genomics, the study of that, which basically is the potential of the bug to do certain things. Just the potential doesn't mean that it's going to do it. Then the transcriptome from the mRNA at least gets you to the point that the genes are making copies such that um, there could be action from those genes. But even that isn't good enough. We need to get to the manufacture of proteins, and the study of that is now proteomics. And we also need to understand how these proteins affect the metabolites in the microbes and in the gut or wherever. And this is metabolomics. So the conceptual framework here is that when we're talking about omics, we're talking not only about the gene potential, but all the way through to the metabolites that are there. And this is just the bugs. Then there's us. And those may interact. And then it gets worse than that. All over the body, we have different organisms. So the function may vary in different parts of the body. And then people start eating things. And this is people eating properly, according to the USDA uh, pyramid. But I hear there are a couple of people out there who are just not eating too well in the United States and in some other countries as well. Hmm. And then here are the probiotics that uh, we're hoping can have some effect beneficially for the host. And truly, now, what was such a simple concept before 2008, take a probiotic, get a beneficial effect, feel better, now has become an incredibly complex proposition. Clearly, administration of probiotics is highly relevant uh, to the structure and function of the host microbiome. It's an ecological concept. This is a little different than what we originally learned in uh, medical school. But it is a way for us to focus hypothesis-driven research relating to omics, and that is exciting. Clearly, the host gene, host microbe, host and microbe response to a probiotic needs to be dealt with in a translational uh, context we need studies in man, we need studies in vitro, we need animal models, and we also need simulation. And we probably need to do some iterative work to really understand how to use omics to understand probiotics. But there are many challenges. First of all, I've already mentioned, what's the relevance of the available samples? to the site of action of the probiotic. If we're getting poop, is that good enough? Variability in sample collection and processing. Shh, don't say this too loudly. It's probably unknown how much variability there is there. Variability and validation of the assays has been quite a challenge, and then, when we find something, is that really relevant? And we've got to be awfully careful about jumping to omic markers and point-of-care diagnostics uh, relating to this very, very fast-moving field unless we start taking care of all of these issues. So these things are challenges. I'd like to thank uh, Dr. Duffy, who's my uh, program officer, um, who provided uh, this slide explaining how the microbiome project relates to the particular work that we are doing. We're here. I work with the probiotic Lactobacillus uh, rhamnosus GG, 
which is one of the uh, multi-purpose staged U01 translational studies. And we are focusing on use of omics to understand safety and mechanism of action of uh, lactobacillus GG, which is a very widely used probiotic, yet these details are not well understood.